my sweet summer children, I'm back with the juice to get you through the long night. And so my last video, I kind of left you guys on a cliffhanger. If you did not see my last video, you need to watch that first so you're not like, what the hell is she talking about all through this video? So in the last video, I gave all of the evidence that points to the White Walkers existing beyond the wall for at least, at least 50 years prior to the start of Game of Thrones. But before we can get into what caused the White Walkers to now want to attack Westeros, I have something else to get you through the long night. And that is Amino. So Amino has graciously sponsored this video. So Amino is a platform for people to connect with each other based on things that they like. It's the community of online communities. So Amino is an app and it's completely free. I use Amino for the huge Game of Thrones community that is on there. So Thrones Amino has so much content for all of us that are struggling and literally begging for a season eight trailer. You can chat with people, post your own theories, read other people's theories, you can comment on theories. I've been a part of some very interesting debates on Thrones Amino. So my favorite part about Amino is the quizzes. You can take part in them, you can also make your own quizzes. Some are easier than others. But I challenge everyone that downloads this app to take the known dragons quiz. That quiz is really hard. You'll probably beat my score though. You can add me on there. My username is gray area. I will leave the download link for Amino for both Apple and Android in the description box and I'll pin it in the comments. So back to the video. We always talk about why did the White Walkers come back, but actually it's more likely that the White Walkers were there already. So according to the evidence, the White Walkers were always there. And the real question we should be asking ourselves is what made them choose to now set their icy blue eyes on the south side of the wall. I think we need to look no further than ancient prophecy, and specifically the ancient prophecy of Azor Ahai. It is night in your seven kingdoms now, the Red Woman went on. But soon the sun will rise again. The war continues, Davos Seaworth. And some will soon learn that even an ember in the ashes can still ignite a great blaze. The old maester looked at Stannis and saw only a man. You see a king, you are both wrong. He is the Lord's chosen, the warrior of fire. I have seen him leading the fight against the dark. I have seen it in the flames. The flames do not lie, else you would not be here. It is written in prophecy as well. When the red star bleeds and the darkness gathers, Azor Ahai shall be born again amidst smoke and salt to wake dragons out of stone. So yeah, we're back to Azor Ahai. Jeez, this guy or girl is really elusive. I actually think the Night King is the best candidate for Azor Ahai. He might be Azor Ahai and like he might not even know it or he does know it and he's trying to trick everybody. But what if he heard this ancient prophecy about this hero made from fire that's basically his doom and his downfall, this fiery hero that's going to bring on a summer that never ends he's made of ice ice melts and fire so this could be his fiery doom so he's like oh no somebody send a raven to craster tell him to get to making some more sons and let's kill some wildlings we need a big army and we need it now i mean maybe but there is one part of that prophecy that i want to talk about and that's the red star bleeding which melisandre says is the red comet that appears at the very end of a game of thrones Danny looked and saw it. Low in the east, the first star was a comet, burning red, blood red, fire red, the dragon's tail. She could not have asked for a stronger sign. So the Red Comet is seen and observed by everyone in Westeros and Essos. It's seen everywhere. So it's not like it wasn't seen in the icy abode of the White Walkers in the lands of Always Winter. The White Walkers likely saw this bleeding red star too. So in Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, which I've said is a book series that inspired George, there is Inaluki the Storm King. He's like the Night King. They have a lot of similarities. You can check out my Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn versus Game of Thrones videos. I have them all compiled onto one playlist and I will link it for you. But in Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, there is this star. 
It's called the Conqueror's Star. It appears every 500 years, and in Aluki, the big villain, the Storm King, plans his whole return based around this star. Like, he needs this star to be in the sky to be reborn. So, what if it's something like that for the White Walkers? It's really cool how George goes to length to depict this red comet in almost every character's POV. In King's Landing, the people are calling it King Joffrey's Comet. It's Lannister Crimson sent to herald Joffrey's accession to the throne. The Night's Watch called the Comet Gior's Torch and said it was meant to lead them through the Haunted Forest. The Great John calls it the Red Flag of Vengeance for Ned. Edmure thinks the Comet means a great victory for Riverrun. I mean, literally, everyone thinks it means something. Everyone we have a POV for, a POV chapter for, they think it means something. But we don't know what the White Walkers think of it when they see it because we don't have a POV for them. So what do they think it means for them? Well, the Wolves of Winterfell, Summer and Shaggy Dog, are acting strange when the comet appears. Summer's howls were long and sad, full of grief and longing. Shaggy Dogs were more savage. Their voices echoed through the yard and halls until the castle rang, and it seemed as though some great pack of direwolves haunted Winterfell, instead of only two. The wolves are howling at this comet. Everyone is trying to figure out why the wolves are acting so strange. The wolves howling at the comet is telling. The wolves know things that other people don't. They knew Ned Stark was dead before any of the characters in Winterfell knew they were howling when the ravens came. They mourned the loss of Lady. Like, they know things. So what did they know about this comet that caused them to howl with such grief? Wolves often howl at the moon. These are howling at the comet. See how bright it is, Bran? Perchance they think it's the moon. When Bran repeated that to Osha, she laughed out loud. Your wolves have more wit than your maester, the wildling woman said. They know truths the gray man has forgotten. The way she said it made him shiver. And when he asked what the comet meant, she answered, blood and fire, boy, and nothing sweet. Bran asked Septon Shale about the comet while they were sorting through some scrolls snatched from the library fire. It is the sword that slays the season, he replied, and soon after the White Raven came from Old Town bringing word of autumn, so doubtless he was right, though old Nan did not think so, and she'd lived longer than any of them. Dragons, she said, lifting her head and sniffing. She was near blind and could not see the comet, yet she claimed she could smell it. It be dragons, boy, she insisted. Old Nan and Osha are both on the same track, and they are the most reliable, in my opinion, when it comes to this. Osha says fire and blood and nothing sweet. Fire and blood represents dragons. Fire and blood is actually the words of House Targaryen. Osha is a wildling. She knows it means dragons, and so does Old Nan. Old Nan is right about a lot of stuff. She knows a lot. Well, Let's talk about dragons. Daenerys sees the comet right before she steps into the fire and births dragons. So George R.R. R. Martin grew up Catholic and the birth of dragons kind of mirrors something from the Bible. He could have been inspired by Revelations 12, the woman and the dragon. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the heavens, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crown on its head. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of for 1260 days. I mean, come on, like it's pretty straightforward that George used this for Daenerys and the birthing of dragons. A dragon, the sun, the moon, her being pregnant with the stallion who mounts the world, the comet, the sacrificing her son, even the part about the woman fleeing into the wilderness lines up with Daenerys fleeing into the red waste. But 
This is like the devil. <laughs> the dragon is like the devil. So maybe the Night King is like, hey, White Walker won. That guy they said was gonna be my doom and wake dragons from stone, it's actually a girl and she's done it. The Red Star has bled, let's go whoop ass now. Like maybe the dragons are the devil to the White Walkers. But then again, maybe it's not even that deep. Maybe it's simple. In the show, how did the Night King get past the wall? A dragon. When did the dragons come? when the Red Comet came. So let's look at season seven. The Night King set a trap to get a dragon. He didn't try to kill anyone other than Viserion. Even though they had the means to kill Jon and everyone, like they had the ice picks in their hand, he could have easily killed them. They could have killed Daenerys and Drogon. Drogon was closer than Viserion. The Night King had chains ready to get this dragon and reanimate it. He literally dropped it in the lake so they couldn't burn it and he couldn't reanimate it. And he did all this because a dragon would get the Night King past the wall. Now in the books, I do not think this is going to happen. I do not think Daenerys will lose one of her dragons. I think the White Walkers will have a dragon made of ice, an ice dragon. I think that Game of Thrones, the show, they didn't have enough money to do more than three dragons and they knew that the Night King was gonna be having one. So they just took one of Daenerys' dragons. Like I legit do not think that Viserion will be reanimated in the books. With that being said, the Night King still was waiting for a dragon. The show just simplified it. Cause think about it like this. When the Red Comet comes, it brings a shit ton of magic with it. We all attribute the heightening of magic to the birth of dragons, but what if it's actually the opposite? What if it was the comet that actually brought back the old powers? Because if you think about it, the comet was a factor in the birth of dragons. Daenerys sees the comet and the comet is the reason that she goes into the flames. So maybe magic was heightened with the comet as well and then the dragons just further amplified that. The comet was a factor in the birth of dragons. Dragons. So after the birth of dragons, old powers are waking, glass candles are burning, and magic is ramping up. So if the Night King needs some magic, like some powerful magic, amplified magic to do whatever he means to do, then maybe this was the only time he had and that time was right now. Maybe he didn't have the means to do it before and this magic he needed right now and maybe he needed a dragon too. Most people see the comet as either an omen of doom or a sign of conquest. With all that being said, the White Walkers did not decide to fuck Westeros up until that red comet appeared. And it was for one of two reasons. The first reason being the Night King is Azor High and the red comet was his herald. The red comet would finally bring him a means to breach the wall. Or the Night King is not Azor High, and in the White Walker culture, Azor High is the devil. And they are only acting out of self preservation because this ancient prophecy has been fulfilled, and they are doomed if they do not try to stop Azor High from bringing on the summer that never ends. But what do you think? I'm interested to know. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.